Thanks for plugging in. Today, we're talking excellence with TE Connectivity and the Interconnect Specialists from TTI ip e It's the news, information, and detail you need to know to stay informed about the latest innovations in all types of electronics connectivity. And now, here's your host, TTI's Scott Stimley. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I'm Scott Stimley, Director of Supplier Marketing at TTI. In this episode, I am happy to welcome TE Connectivity Senior Manager of R&D, Product Development and Engineering, Josh Potterjoy. Thanks for joining us today, Josh. Please tell us a little bit about you and your career at TE. Hey, Scott. Great to be here. Yeah, just a little background on myself. So I've spent uh, my 20-year career all in engineering, uh, mainly in research and development and product development. I've been with TE Connectivity for a little over 11 years now. And I started out as a product development engineer on some of our uh, European product lines uh, and then moved around a little bit within the company, but found my uh, my home here in the product development group working on power and signal products. Great. Thanks, Josh. In this episode, we're going to discuss connector reliability and more specifically, connector terminal or contact backouts. Please define for us what terminal backout means exactly. Yeah, great question. It's always good to have a starting point here. So uh, I guess before we even dig into that, just a a few things to mention, uh, just to understand how these things actually work. So when we talk about terminal backouts, usually we're referring to the um, terminal itself, some metal contact inside of a plastic housing being pushed or pulled out. Uh, But it's really important to understand how those come together in the first place. So typically... Terminals go into a housing one of two ways. Uh, First way is they may have these uh, small metal lances built into the sheet metal themselves. This is uh, a traditional way of latching a contact into a housing. Uh, The second way is using a plastic latch inside the housing. Uh, So two different methods, but they accomplish the same basic means. Uh, the reason why I wanted to get that out of the way first, though, is just to understand, you know, there could be different failure methods depending on the type of system you're talking about. So, uh, yeah, jumping from there, you know, really, when we talk about the backout, the backout is a failure of one of those retention mechanisms. So this could be a situation where everything seems like it's in place, and then uh, maybe later on in use it falls out, or uh, it's being forced out be- because of some kind of mechanical uh, intervention either during assembly or the wires are being pulled out. Uh, and as you can imagine, this can be a really frustrating problem for our customers. As uh, as I said, it looks like the components are, are fully assembled. Uh, you get to a certain point in your end assembly and everything seems to fall apart. So uh, not a great problem to have, <clears throat> but luckily uh, we'll go through some ways to prevent that and uh, we can talk about more uh, as far as the backouts and how to uh, make sure that doesn't happen in your assemblies. All right. Sounds good. Uh, So I have to imagine uh, that when a backout occurs, that's going to cost something. (laughs) So, um, you know, what what sort of costs have you run into that are associated with uh, terminal backouts? Yeah. Yeah. As you can imagine, I I mentioned the word frustration before. Uh, So that is definitely part of it. And that frustration uh, really results from two things, uh, time and money. So when something happens, when your assembly falls apart, that's certainly going to be a problem as far as time. You're gonna have to rework it, you'll have to do something. So you'll either have to take it apart, uh, find the issue, put it back together, or uh, in some extreme cases, there could be scrap involved. So you may have to uh, cut your losses, remove the connector and replace it with a whole new one. So as far as um, you know, as backouts are concerned, I, I'd say they're uh, relatively frustrating from that aspect, especially because um, you know when they're found, it's usually late in the in the assembly process. These things could be you know in your end of line check before you find the backout, or you know, in worst case, it happens out in the field. Someone goes to plug the connector in, and, and the parts fall apart. So. Uh, as you can imagine, the further on these go, the uh, the more painful they can be to repair and correct. So what are some of the primary causes for a, a terminal to back out? Well, there, there's quite a few things that could happen. Uh, I'll go through some of the most common ones, though. So from the beginning to end here, typically when we have an issue with backouts, it's one of these issues. 
Uh, one thing that can happen is very early on in the process when the product isn't handled properly. So, right, we have a, a reel of contacts, the sheet metal contacts, uh, and they're being improperly handled. Maybe they're being bent or damaged. Uh, you know, many times what we find uh, from customer complaints is uh, the incorrect application or termination tooling was used. So, uh, they didn't use TE brand tooling or they used damage tooling and it caused the deformation or bending of the terminal. Maybe it elongated the terminal. It changed the general shape. Uh, this can be a really big problem when it comes to installing into a housing because, again, uh, these parts are they're highly engineered. They're designed to a very specific purpose. And if they get damaged during that process, it can cause all kinds of problems down the line. Uh, Secondly, we talked a little bit about the termination piece, but even the handling. Uh, so if somebody gets the part terminated, everything looks good, but then they throw it into a box or throw it into a bag of different parts and they get all jumbled around and tangled. As you can imagine, as I mentioned before, uh, some of these parts have those, those small metal lances that hold them into the housing. They can easily get bent or damaged until they're installed in that housing. So again, it's really important to make sure that these parts are handled correctly during the assembly process. And then once you get to the part of actually pushing the sheet metal contact into the plastic housing, again, it's very important that proper care is taken, follow the instructions put out there by the manufacturer, make sure that you're not forcing it into the wrong location or putting it in backwards. Of course, uh, everything has its limits. So if you push a contact in too hard, you could cause some damage if you, especially if you run into some of the built-in stops. Uh, you know, usually there are orientation features in there, but uh, with enough force, you can you can force them in and sometimes cause some problems. So it's it's always important during the assembly process that care is taken to you know, follow the instructions and uh, be aware of the uh, the scale of size here. Sometimes these really small signal connections can be fragile, so they they take some extra care when putting them together. Uh, another thing that can happen again during that assembly process is they're just not fully assembled. So. There is some friction as you force them in, you know, they have to go through some kind of mechanical locking feature. So whether it's the plastic lever on the housing or one of those mechanical lances, uh, it has to push past a feature inside the plastic housing and spring back. So it does take a little bit of force to get them in. Um, so making sure that those are fully engaged is always really important. Uh, making sure that those go past the special locking feature and click into place is, uh, is critical to getting these in. Uh, and then, um, you know, some of the things that can happen after the assembly. Uh, one big area that we've seen in the past is, you know, damage during end of line testing. So sometimes test fixtures are used and these test fixtures can cause some damage to the product. Maybe uh, a probe is being forced into the, the connector and that probe can bend or manipulate the contact. Uh, of course, that's gonna cause all kinds of problems down the line. So it's it's really important to use the correct size probings, fixtures, and, and make sure that the right end of line testing is used. And then, uh, you know, one of the biggest <clears throat> causes for backouts that we've seen is uh, incorrect wire management or wire address. So, you know, everything looks fine. The, the harness looks good. It's tested. Everything works properly. Then we throw it into a, a big master assembly and, and grab the wire and just yank it around at a 180 degree angle and, and pull all the terminals around inside the housing. So that's that's one big reason for some of these backouts is, uh, you know, that wire is putting a lot of stress on the terminal. It's causing the terminals inside the housing to, to basically bias in one direction or another. And uh, that could cause some major issues when it comes to mating uh, a mating connector, right? Because again, it's, it's really important that these things uh, can float freely inside of the housings. Uh, they're meant to float to prevent uh, stubbing or this type of issue. So we need to make sure there's a, the proper level of float to operate as designed. And by putting a lot of stress on that wire dress can cause some problems. Okay. So I guess, you know, what I hear, you know, operators and, and possibly even some of the automated assembly processes, there, there's things that they can do to, you know, help prevent or avoid a terminal back out. Right? Of course. Right. So, you know, using the, the correct equipment up front, and you know, that's one of the key ways to prevent these issues downstream. So you know, are we using the right application tooling? Are we using the right terminal for the right wire size? So some of the basic checks that can be done before even um, starting to put the assembly together, that's key. Make sure all of the equipment is uh, 
per our application specification. <clears throat> and again, we always uh, specify application tooling and any other you know, terminal removal equipment or installation equipment on our product specifications. So that can be easily found on te.com or in our, our application specification for the product. And, uh, and again, it's, it's key to note that um, these products go through a lot of rigorous testing. We do a lot of uh, <clears throat> a verification for this type of thing. Uh, but if you don't use the right equipment or the right tooling, all of that goes out the window. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind too, especially from the assembly side, is again, to follow those assembly procedures, make sure that you're using the, the right handling instru instructions, the white, the right, um, the white, I'm sorry, the right wire dress instructions. You know, we're not pulling that wire at a high angle. Uh, we're adding the right uh, strain relief to the product as specified, right? This is all gonna help prevent these, these back outs. Um, <clears throat> likewise, when the product's being assembled to make sure you hear that click when it goes into the housing and sometimes you can gently pull back and make sure that it's fully latched. That'll prevent some of those minor errors where someone pushes it in and it doesn't go all the way into the, the locking position. Is that, uh, is that also known as, you know, uh, either a TPA or a CPA in, in, you know, in your applications? Well, as we get to, uh, yeah, and I think that would be probably the next reason I was going to cover to prevent these back outs. So, you know, just to broadly go through this, the first method, uh, is just, you know, use the right equipment, use the right uh, instructions. But then there are some, I'd say, uh, additional or optional accessories we can add to, you know, further prevent or ensure that these go in properly. And and you brought up a good point here with the TPA. So the, uh, the terminal position assurance, uh, it's, on some products, it's sold as a, an optional extra or accessory. Some products, it's actually integrated in the plastic housing. But um, really what this does is it's an extra component or many times a piece of plastic that slides behind the terminal. So once the terminal is installed in the housing, once all the uh, components are in there, these um, TPAs or accessories come in and they slide behind those and they do a few things. Uh, first thing it's going to do is if that terminal wasn't fully seated, so maybe uh, you didn't push it all the way in, you get to, you met some resistance and stopped, uh, the TPA will finish the job for you. So it will push the terminal past the latching point and make sure it's locked in place every time. So once the TPA is fully secured, you know the terminals are fully secured. It also adds that additional visual cue. So once you see the TPA in place, once it comes down to your end of line inspection, you see all the TPAs are, are pushed all the way in and they're latched. Uh, that gives you a good visual indicator that everything's in place. Because again, uh, it's sometimes it's really hard to see if terminals are all the way down there in the housing. Uh, the TPA sit, usually sits flush at the end. Uh, so it is a little more visual than anything else. And then, you know, finally the TPA, it does add some additional retention on some of our housings. Um, depending on the design, uh, it can be more or less, but it does add some additional retention there and it, it gives you the assurance that everything's in there properly. Uh, another method we do, it's similar to the TPA, is uh, called a two-piece housing. Now the two-piece housing is uh, say a little different. It does act somewhat like a TPA, but the housing itself is actually split in two. The first piece, uh, accepts the terminals, they go inside, and then the second piece comes over the top. Uh, so it can't work without the second piece of the housing, like a TPA is an accessory, the two-piece housing is, you know, it's a unit. Uh, but when those go together, you're guaranteed those terminals are never coming back out. So that the two-piece housing is uh, a very, very rugged way to make sure your terminals don't come back out. We don't offer it on all of our product lines, but we do have a, a few offerings there with that two-piece design. I have to think there's also many safety and performance considerations that relate to connection reliability. Uh, can you comment on those? Well, of course, uh, you know, there's multiple areas that you can see failures with uh, connector reliability. Uh, backouts are no different. Now, in the case of a backout, uh, you know, there, there can be several things that happen. Uh, first, you know, just the lack of continuity. So maybe the back out is so bad, the terminal falls out, you just have an open circuit. Uh, so that could be a problem from both a power and signal side. Usually, though, it's that one's a little more easy to diagnose, right? You're completely missing the signal. You have no power. Uh, some of the, I'd say, more difficult situations to diagnose 
are, you know, if there is some contact, but we're not getting the right amount of normal force, we're not getting the right amount of engagement, uh, that becomes a bigger problem because then, of course, you know, maybe you're getting intermittent signal or you're not making a great power connection uh, and that can cause a host of issues. So it is really important to make sure that those terminals are where they're supposed to be uh, and make sure that they are, are functioning the way they're designed to be. Well, that's great. Uh, really good information, Josh. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, before we go, is there anything else you'd like our listeners to know about, you know, as it relates to terminal and contact backouts within a connection system? Yeah. So, you know, I think from, from an engineering perspective, the way I'd put it is, you know, if these are, these are highly engineered parts, right? So if they are used the way they are intended to be used, if, you know, the instructions and the tooling is used properly, uh, you know, there should be a, a low, low issue of this happening. So, you know, usually what happens is you know, something isn't per the product specification or application specification where you run into issues. Um, the other thing I would say is, you know, we've seen a lot of customers use things like uh, glues or epoxies to try to, you know, make sure that the connection's solid, things aren't going to come out over time. Uh, and I would just be very, very cautious of that. As I mentioned earlier, these contacts are meant to be floating inside these plastic housings. This float you know, it adds a few different um, benefits, but uh, mainly it's there for, you know, proper alignments. So when you put the parts together, they're properly aligned. They they float to meet one another inside the housing. They also prevent uh, wear over life. So they help absorb some of that vibration that might happen, uh, you know, inside of a, think of an assembly, whether it's an appliance or, you know, something in industrial or automotive, uh, it absorbs some of that assembly between the connections. Uh, so I, I do recommend high caution when you know trying to take matters into your own hands and adding you know those epoxies or glue so that that could cause some more issues downstream. But um, you know we do have solutions for this. Those TPAs, as I mentioned, or the two-piece housings would be good solutions. Uh, but you can always reach out to us if you have more questions. Thank you, Josh. That's great info. Um, please tune in to our next episode where we dive into connection system ceiling solutions. Until next time, I'm Scott Stemley. And this has been Talking Excellence with TE and TTI. That's it for this episode of Talking Excellence. Join us next time for the podcast that brings together the specialists of TTI with the connectivity experts from TE and insightful conversation about getting connected.